Thank you, Canada. Woo! I'm here uh, backstage, quote unquote, at the Hard Luck Bar with uh, Roger Merritt of Agnostic Front. Uh, how you doing today? It's kind of chilly. You doing all right? I'm doing all right. It is kind of chilly in here, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm doing good. I'm happy to be here. Um, I love Toronto. It's a sold out show, so I'm doing great. So before we get into it, you made an interesting post on Instagram the other day. Uh, you getting so you want to get a new t- piece on your head, a new tattoo on your head, and you're, you you the first thing to do was to get the old the the cobweb removed, and it was a little bit painful. How you how you doing with that with that today? I'm doing much better than when I got it done, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I didn't expect it to be like that. But I'm I'm going through with with the whole way and looking forward to a whole complete head piece, you know. But maybe I'll change my mind if it's doesn't work out so why, why do you have to get it removed first because sometimes you know you can just get something tattooed over over something else why'd they have to remove that one first i'm just curious about that that's one of your oldest pieces right oh the of course they're, they're both there's two spider webs and all that stuff because i the piece i want to get i don't want no I'm interrupting it and it would you, it'll become two weird cover-ups and i want the whole piece the way i want it so uh, last time I saw you, we talked in uh, about six years ago at a very strange uh, music festival in Montebello, Quebec. It was a very dirty, filthy kind of uh, festival, and uh, you know we, we talked about things. So that was about six years ago. You know, since then, you know everyone knows what's been going on, what with the movie and, and Godfathers of Hardcore, and, and seeing how things are. So so basically, uh, how are, have things been since the movie and since uh, your diagnosis? And, and has has life on the road changed that much or is it back to where it was before all that happened man it's the same old shit <laughs> same old grind man you know um nothing's really changed um i mean i've I'm, I, I'm under good care and i'm aware of a lot of stuff for myself you know that i need to be aware but the on the road is the same same thing man we're out there you know doing what we do loving what we do and just the show goes on you know and that's that's just the way it is right now what can we look forward to this album? Because you, you hear new agnostic front album, you know to a certain degree what you're going to get. But always there's that extra ingredient that makes the al- each album sort of its own thing. What, what do you think that this album is going to be like in that respect? I mean, I think, uh, I think what I really like a lot about this album, first of all, the artwork is, is something that's a little extra to begin with because it's a throwback to like our 1986 um, cover with... Sean Tag, who once again we bought in to do this album cover, so that's a that's a surprise right there for a lot of people. Uh, there's a couple of thrashy songs, that's why we bought the throwback in. But I think the most important song and the special one's going to be a song called "I Remember." Anyway, it's really about like uh, me and Vinny remembering putting this whole band and everything we do together, and incorporating all the you know, which kind of is a nice thing after the the, the film, The Godfather's of Hardcore. So, I mean, musically, anything crazy? No. Just intensity, the, you know, your your strong agnostic front record, you know, 30, our 12th studio album, 35 years later, we're still doing it, you know? So speaking of that, you're on the road right now uh, celebrating Victim in Pain. And, you know, you listen to Victim in Pain and then you listen to, you know, uh, American Dream and, and stuff like that now. Uh, and it's like you that they're both agnostic from, but like you, you guys have been able to to sort of take your sound into places where other bands, you know, other hardcore bands, other punk bands, you know, they get criticized for being a little bit melodic. They get criticized for having these like extra singable moments, but but you guys don't. Why why do you think that is? Uh, we do what the hell we want anyway to begin with. You know, uh, critics will always be critics. You know, you gotta you, you gotta do what you what you love. First of all, you gotta be true to yourself and be confident in what you're doing to present it to other people. And if it comes across, it comes across. Critics are critics, man. There's always somebody out there talking shit, saying something. And most of those critics don't even write music or not even bands, so they don't even know what it's like to be on the other side of the wall. You know, they just they want to say what they want to say. You know. 
When you're playing Victim and Pain songs now and you're blasting through those songs, is it just like muscle memory or do you have like specific thoughts that uh, that might have been different from at the time when they're they're first being written? Well, what do you think about that? Well, man, when I play, I just when I get I hit the stage, I just I hit the stage. You know, it's just it's everything I love about why I'm here. It's all the 23 hours of work to get here for that you know that one hour of performance and right. you know in there you know and and it's i love being on stage i mean i just you know songs come on I, I just intensify for whatever song it is and i have a great time i don't i don't think memories are going on in my head while while it's happening right but it's um it's just you know just doing it you know old song versus new song like that the feeling is always consistent for you it's never like a, i think so i think it's consistent i don't, I don't approach things in any different way i approach them as you know same intensity same same everything you know because i love the new songs as much as i love the old songs the sort of differences between being an agnostic front now and, and, and back then, now, no matter what you do, partially because the band is so legendary at this point, what you do is going to be wrapped up in, in some commercial circumstances to a certain degree, you know, because you, you have bigger labels and you have distri record distributions and, and all that. Is that stuff that, you, that you, I know you run a lot of the business, is that stuff that you're okay with? Or is it, is, do, you, do you miss the certain DIY aspect of oh, being love, agnostic front? I love the DIY aspect, I mean, Clubs like this to me is like, look where I'm sitting at. Look at this backstage room and stuff. Like, it's it's all good, man. Like, <clears throat> I like, I understand playing the big shows. I'm not a fan of it. I don't like it. If you ask me, I'd rather play here than, than an outdoor, like, festival thing. But I understand the importance of playing the outdoor festival because you're getting introduced to new people that have never even seen anything like us or heard anything like us and everybody's got to start somewhere not everybody was born cool with tattoos like i was <laughs> no you know what i mean not everybody was born a certain way so right. like the introduction and then you make your way into something you know it's cool you know like yeah. you know like you know if i sit around and tell everybody what was your first show or your first show your first concert i'm sure it's going to be no different than somebody saying green day or or blink 182 which are great bands in my opinion that just on their levels, you know what I mean? Right. So you gotta introduce yourself to all these bands and they, they make full circle come around, you know? So you don't mind like having to deal with the more commercial aspects now if that's what you have to do? I don't mind, but I don't deal with it. I really, honestly, I, we don't really deal with commercial. I, I mean, when we're playing a festival, if we're asked to play a festival, um, just, it's it's never really commercial for us. We're still we're still always the garbage at the festival pool. You know. I, I guess I feel just the way the band like just out of necessity the way the band is promoted now. Like Nuclear Blast is not a small label. Like for instance, but you know, independent label. They're one of the very few independent labels that are around still. A lot of labels are now with sold to Sony and all these other things. So Nuclear Blast is a stronger independent label. But you know they all they all we ask them to do is get our records to places, get you to meet me, and we do interviews. That's all we ask of them. We don't ask nothing else. Everything else we do, we're out there, we perform. We, you know, you get our records in places so people can pick it up. They come to our shows, and even when we leave, they could go find it, and we'll play. And that's a great relationship. We're not asking anything more from them. They don't ask anything more from us. We travel, we support our new record, and they, and they do the same thing. So, uh, Agnostic Front has been champions of social causes since the beginning. Uh, with the way things are and, and the rise of populism and all these things going on, like, where, how do you feel about the messages that you're sending out now versus, you know, 35 years ago, you're touring victim in pain with, with the sort of the extreme nature of, of culture and society right now? Do you, how do you, where, where do you see Agnostic Front fitting into all that, maybe as a protest band or, or things like that? You know, after all these years, I'll be really honest with you, after all these years, I'm talking 37 years, we just want to come with the town and play and have a good time. We want everybody to get along. We want everybody to come to the show and leave with big smiles and, and come back. Most importantly, you know, get home safe and come back. Um, we've been through so much, man. We've been through all, just about everything. And and after a while, it just becomes the same old tired route, you know. And we've we've been cruising on that tired route for a long time. So right now we're 
we're on a different path just to you know to enjoy what we got for as long as we got you know so regardless of of what you might say in the lyrics when people come to the show you'd rather it be closer to like a green day blink experience and say like a napalm death experience or or something like that well, i don't well, I, I don't really get it. What's the difference? Well, it's like coming in and then you have, you know, there, there's a certain level of political engagement. And I think when people think of Agnostic yeah. Front, they do they do sort of think about that. You know what I mean? We don't really talk about politics, really. We talk about social political stuff. We don't really talk about world politics, if that's what you're talking about. We talk about, like, friendship, about stuff that goes around us on a day-to-day -day basis. The world's fucked up. And let, leave that and leave all that other crap for politicians who are all corrupt and they're all full of shit. I couldn't care for any of them on any sides. You know what I mean? I think, if anything, people picking any side, it, you just fell into the whole political agenda. And I have a song about that called Conquer and Divide. Guess what? You all did it. If that's what you did, either way you go. You know, so I don't care about any of that. You know, I know it's not going to change my my life. I'm, I lived through it, you know. I lived through Reagan, through Reagan, all that stuff. I mean, I know we could do little differences to that will make a change, but it takes a while. And I want my kids to have a better world, of course, and all that stuff too. But we we, take, we talk about more like socially stuff, you know, about oppression, overcoming oppression, more than world political stuff. Because this, this world's fucked up. It's been fucked up for centuries. Forget about today. Forget about 10 decades ago. It's been fucked up for centuries. People have been murdering people for, for greed for how fucking long. How much blood has been spilled in the church just just for, for greed. Um, Bruce Springsteen, uh, poor men want to be rich, rich men want to be king, and a king ain't satisfied till he rules everything. That's the world we live in, you know? That's it. That's really what it is. It's been that way for centuries. You know, right now I'm trying to pass on good stuff to my kids from my bad, from my experiences, and I wish everything could be solved tomorrow, but that's a hard thing, man. I think all that leadership, political pe people, they're all. It's all fucking crazy. You know, I'm talking about people in politics and the high ups, presidents and, and mayors and all that shit. They're all full of shit. I don't, I've never had any good luck. The first time I, ever, I was ever able to vote, I voted and I was very disappointed. So I agreed never to do that again. This is that came to Joey, to Johnny, to me. Roger, I want to thank you so much for speaking to us today. And uh, do you have any final uh, word today for uh, Canada and the rest of your fans? No, I want to say thank you for coming out, supporting, of course, just not only my band, but Canada Hardcore. And Toronto's always an awesome, awesome spot. Always a lot of great bands that play with us here. Um, you know, thanks for the support. Thanks for, shit, for, for all the years. You guys have had great bands from back then till today, you know. We've been playing with bands, Jesus I, could, I mean, I remember that first wave of Canadian punk bands that came to play with us, and we came up here too. We shared record labels with like Neils and stuff like that. So many great fucking bands, Stretch Marks, so many great bands, you know, out here, and and it's awesome. It's just a border, unfortunately, and it's a rough border between both, you know, because it's never easy going in or out, you know. And other than that, you know the. If the borders are the only thing in between us, other than that, we, we have a lot of stuff in common, so that's awesome. <laughs>